Ambassador? Ambassador? Yes, yes, I am awake. I was just thinking of his majesty, the king's greatness. Of course you were, said the aide. So what were you saying? Better be something noteworthy to disturb my relentless thoughts towards the king, said the old Brian Strutton proud. We are approaching Mars. The Terrans are waiting for our confirmation. Are we ready to disembark? Yes, yes, with haste, of course. Now go, go, tell the captain to dock the ship by the king. By the king? Left alone in his chamber, the grumpy old Brian looks out of the viewing port and sees the planet so-called Mars. Apparently it was named after an ancient god of war of the Terrans. How impudent of them! To think a forsaken deity could rival the might and graciousness of the king. He recalls how the planet was initially uninhabitable, even for the death-worlders called humans, as it was barren, without a suitable atmosphere, and without proper magnetic field, very different from what he sees beneath him. Large oceans now rule the surface, and green lush forests swarm the lands. Here and there, you could still see the red dust and red rocks that inspired humans to name it Red Planet back in time. As he waits for his ship to dock in the orbital ring that adorns the celestial body, he wonders if this species is as primitive and as barbaric as many at the royal court make them out to be. Ambassador, this is John Nebulus, the governor of Mars and the ambassador appointed by the Terran government. The aide makes way as an old but robust-looking humanoid steps forward, the fur in his head gray and white his facial features withered by the unrelenting march of time, his stature diminished compared to the youth of his species, his gaze just as sharp as in his prime. Behind him follows the dignified light gray coat woven in golden details, so majestic that it almost seems waving in the non-existent air currents of the station. The numerous military decorations show that he has countless battles behind his back. Greetings. I'm the humble being that speaks for the great king of the Bryans. My name is not relevant compared to his majesty's greatness. Refer to me just as ambassador. Proudly said, while puffing out his chest and straightening his back to seem taller. Reaching an impressive meter and fifteen centimeters by human standards. Greetings to you, ambassador. As stated by your adjutant, I have been chosen by the Terran Senate to lead the negotiations regarding our provisional acceptance in the coalition of the First Arm. Your arrival has come earlier than we expected, and I fear that without the diplomats from Keltes and Ryuji, we cannot begin our talks. A bit annoyed, the Brian thinks of what to do. After all, they arrived two days earlier thanks to his insistence of leaving with great haste in order to deal with the unexpected events that are bound to happen in an uncivilized and wild sector, such as the one controlled by the humans. He expected pirate attacks or lawless bands of mercenaries to hinder his glorious arrival, but surprisingly, everything went smoothly. Well, since we are to gather here to talk about war affairs, how about we show you some of our military assets, just to put your mind and heart at ease? said the old human, smiling. A bit shaken by the sheer size, the predatory gaze and show of teeth from his human counterpart, he takes a moment to reply. Sure, why not? I hope you will give us a decent sighting to report to His Majesty. The small group heads for a shuttle that will lead them to the surface. During the brief ride, the Brian tries to extract a bit of information from their soon-to-be allies, also looking for something to make fun of or potential weaknesses. So tell me, Governor, what can you human add by joining our formidable alliance? Well, you will see shortly. As of now, we are heading to base Marsha Victrix, where the 12th War Noughts Division is currently preparing for deployment. Look outside the window, you will see it from here. Confused, the Ambassador looks outside. How could one see a planetary structure from up here? They just entered the atmosphere. All he could see was just a big city. I find it difficult to see your so-called base. Maybe I'll see it once we get closer. The old human chuckled. Well, you see, my friend, that is the base. Pointing at what was mistaken as a large city by the king's might. Yes, 
He could see now. The city was actually a base. He spotted airfields here and there and depots the size of towns, barracks, shooting ranges, and even a vehicle training ground. The base itself was actually of a geometrical shape, encased by a sturdy and tall wall overlooked by countless defensive towers and few imposing gates. In the middle of all of this, a large and blocky structure resembling what a modern castle would look like stood mighty and proud, the command center. Marsha Victrix, in honor of ancient times, it means something like martial and victorious, very appropriate to have such name on the planet our ancestors named after the god of war. As you can see, the base is all encompassed by a wall the shape of an eight-point star, 20 meters high, 10 deep and wide, with compartmentalized and separated sections. Its surface area is around 1,500 square kilometer. Well defended by nine independent and overlapping shield generators, each able to cover the entirety of the base. Of course, there are fixed weapons emplacements on the bastions and towers, but we also have numerous hidden retractable weapon platforms supplemented by ten mobile air defense missile brigades sparse around. The four airfields are capable of hosting up to 1,000 air and spacecrafts of different sizes. Each and the system of underground depots and bunkers assures us we have enough ammunitions and consumables to conduct high-intensity operations for two years without resupply. The base has a permanent garrison of eight mechanized regiments and four attached armored battalions. If needed, additional units will be stationed. The ambassador had the face expression equivalent to his species of a jaw drop. Nebulous continued. Sadly, I must say that during our war games, we found out that this base cannot hold out for too long without external assistance, especially allied warships. If the case arose where the Marcia Victrix was isolated and under assault, we estimated that with rationing and scavenging, it could only hold for a period of 10 years, if hastily prepared, up to 25 years with due preparations and facing the average opponent in the galaxy. We based our estimates on the Zarlark. Average opponent, my ass. Thought the ambassador. Those wild beasts are known for stopping at nothing short of a black hole. And they estimated 10 years? No matter their apparent bravado, these humans must have exaggerated their claims. I refuse to believe this. The very amusing, maybe you are indeed worthy of being at His Majesty's side, just for the brief period. I shall judge once I see your units up and close. The shuttle softly touched steel on a landing pad, protruding from what seemed from the sky as a modern take on a castle. And that was the intention when it was built. Every surface that was not dedicated to sensors or weapons was covered by thick steel and composite plating of unknown materials. Walking through the corridors, the alien ambassador could notice two things. Firstly, the absurd amount of security ranging from the point defense turrets at every blast door to the weapons lockers on every single floor. Secondly, the discipline these seemingly barbarous people seemed to have. For every human they went by, everyone stopped and saluted. Not him. Not me. They are saluting the old man that is accompanying the great myself. Despite his indignation at such a thing, he realized his guide must have served a remarkable military career before becoming governor of Mars. Finding some courage, he asked. Well, despite the sorry appearance you show right now, your subordinates seem to have respect for your presence. Tell me now, what have you done to gain such fame? He smiled and took off his hat. Beneath the white fur of his head stayed right in place, ordered and shiny, as if coated by a mysterious wax. You see this? Said, pointing to a little sphere lodged on the front of his hat. Light blue. So light it seemed white. So light it was actually fluorescent. Yes the little sphere was actually emanating a faint light. That's a neutron star medal. It's considered one of the highest honors in our society. I got it back in the days when I was only 142 years old. Ah, I was still young and strong. 
More perplexed than anything, the small group continued. Eventually they reached an open area where Sol's radiation heated the cold skin of the Bryans. Happily, they took a minute to breathe in the fresh air. Here we are. This is the designated area for the 12th Warnock Division. What's with the name? Oh, you see. Back when we were just exploring the stars, the ones who had the task to explore the unknown were called astronauts and cosmonauts. We wanted to maintain a sort of tradition. For the bravest and most daring men. Of course, this is just one of the formations we employ. See them as a sort of elite units. We also have the Marines, the Army, the Space Force, the Landers, the Imperial Guards, and so on, each with their own different units for different tasks and purposes. The human war hero stopped as he noticed the Ambassador was shocked and in awe of what was in front of him. Rows and rows of armored vehicles, artillery, tanks, trucks, atmospheric support aircrafts, helicopters, hovercrafts, armored scout cars, war bicycles, and so on. By the king! This must be your whole armada. This is outstanding. Ho! Oh. No, you misunderstood. Mate, this is just the equipment of the 12th Division. We are currently reviewing it. Can you tell me what those are? They must be the bane of the battlefield. Said pointing at some vehicles in the distance, towering and menacing. Ah, yes. The self-propelled extreme terrain artillery and howitzers. See those right there? They are 10 inches variable length barrel. The barrel length can be manually adjusted directly in the field with integrated and complex mechanisms from the caliber length of L60 to L15. Depending on the operational needs, they can operate either as long-range artillery or as howitzers, as the name implies. They have four mechanical legs with variable foot area and have a maximum ground clearance of 5.5 meter, enabling them to move even in the harshest of terrains. If magnetized and with adequate preparation, they can scale vertical walls. They are not meant for frontline combat, but are very impressive at first sight. How many are assigned per unit? Each Warnaught division has 72, in addition to two self-propelled artillery battalions and one self-propelled rocket artillery battalion. Sometimes additional units are assigned as extra support companies. Uh, and what are those? Those are the drone carriers, land vehicles that can launch and control remotely up to 10 drones each for reconnaissance or suicide drones swarm attack. Each division has 124 of them. What about that? That's an adaptable battle tank. We can change configuration with a couple of mechanics in few hours, depending on the needs. And that? Hours went by as the ambassador inquired about everything regarding those wonders of technology, the likes of which the Royal Army would not even dream of. Initially, he was just skeptical, but in the end, he was just craving knowledge and wanted to know more, not for his king or for the intelligence bureau, but for himself, for his curiosity. This armament was nothing short of amazing. Tell me, how many such divisions can you field? Surely they cannot be that much. Well, yes, we only have 53 Warnots Division, and the Marine Division are just slightly less combat capable as they are around 25,000 strong, while Warnots are usually 30,000 strong at full strength. If memory does not betray me, we should have around 250 Marina Divisions. Ah, uh, also around 500 Army Divisions, which are a bit inferior in terms of numbers and equipment to the first two. About the others? I don't really remember, sorry. We should have around 2,000 divisions made out of volunteers and are able to, with the current equipment stockpiles, field up to 25,000 divisions with standard equipment. If we really need to, we can resort to somewhat outdated stuff we have in warehouses. Nebulous paused as he noticed the ambassador had stopped listening, still trying to make sense of what he heard. I will ask our king if we can become your vassals. An ominous shadow looming over them. Ah, wait until you see the Navy.